So let's click the save button. And when this button is clicked, we want to save the record in the database. So we need few properties for that. We need to have the time of the appointment. We have to have the customer for this appointment and we have to have the type of this appointment. So I'm going to create a variable called scheduled add. And this is going to be a date time. So this is going to be the time and date for the appointment. And next I'm going to try to combine the date from the date picker with the time that the user enters into a text box. So the date is going to be coming from date picker, which is of type date time, but the time is just a text box and the user will enter the time. So we need to make sure that the time is valid. So I'll wrap it all in try catch and I will assign a scheduled ad to be coming from the appointments. I'm calling the class appointments directly because I want the combined date time method. And this one is a shared method, so we don't need to instantiate new object of it. You can see when I press that, the method or the function is available to us. So I'll call that and pass in the date coming from the date picker, which is the DTP date. And I'll get the value of it and change it to date. I only want the date from it. And the next value is the time, which is coming from the TXT time dot text. So this combined date time will try to combine the date from the date picker and the time from the text box. And if it fails, we'll of course have the exception. And if it succeeds, then we will have the scheduled add as a date time created for us. And then we can use it and enter it into the database. So if it fails in a catch, we'll simply set the error provider to be set error and we want to display the error next to the time text box. So this TXT time and we want to simply tell the user to please enter valid time. And of course we don't want to proceed any further until the user fixes it. So we will return after we have the time, then we can proceed and start actually entering the information into the database. So we will need the type ID, which is the type of the appointment. So I'll create a variable for that and it's a short and it is coming from the selected value in the dropdown. Remember we have our dropdown populated with the repair types and it's bound with the description and the type ID. So it's coming from the CBO repair type dot selected value. Then we need the customer ID. So I'll do another dim. And that two is coming from the dropdown, but this time from the CBO customer. Let's have a look at the form again. We have the checkbox for whether the repair guy needs to be licensed. So that's true or false. So let's create a variable for that. And that's going to be, of course, a Boolean. And that's coming from the checkbox licensed. And we'll see if it's checked. If it's checked, it's true. If it's not checked, then it's false. And now we have everything we need and we can enter it into our database using the insert method. Of course, it returns true or false depending whether the insert succeeded. So we'll use it in an if statement and we'll do an appointment dot insert and pass everything to it. So the first one is the type ID. The next one is the description, which is coming from the txt description dot text. Then we have the licensed. Then we have the customer ID, so I'll pass that in. And finally, we have the scheduled. So which is our scheduled ad. So if it succeeds, if we insert the record successfully, we can simply close the form. We don't need to do anything else. And it will return us back to the appointments form. If it doesn't succeed, then we display an error message. And we don't need to use the message box this time because if I open the form here again, over here is a label in which we can display the message. So in our else statement, I will simply assign the error message to the label. So it's going to be LBL status dot text. 
and it can simply say that we cannot add the appointment. And we can concatenate to it the last error. So in our appointments dot last error. So that's our shared property that will contain the latest error message. All right, so our new appointment can be now added. And last thing we need to do is to be able to modify the appointments. So let's go the modify appointments form next.